First keep peace with yourself, then you can also bring peace to others. So wrote Thomas A. Kempis. In this season of peace, I explore ways to find more in my life and more I can share with other people. I often go out into the woods to find that peaceful time and I love to see the animal prints in the snow reminding me that I'm never alone. Of course, today, it was a little disturbing to find a bear print. Perhaps it would be better if I go to the local nursery to get some more greens for my old 18th century home. This boxwood would look pretty on the mantle. Yes, I continue to decorate Old Stonewell Farm as if from the 18th century. And I decided this year to try to make dried orange garland. Well, more like ornaments. I didn't have enough oranges to make a string of garland. But still, it was quite a peaceful afternoon making these oranges and of course little Ruru had to help. But no 18th century house will be complete for the holidays without a pineapple centerpiece. The pineapple was a symbol of hospitality, still is today, and it was quite popular in the 1700s. And so my friends, welcome to Old Stonewall Farm as we continue our Advent journey to Christmas. Well, here we are, the second week of Advent, and while Old Stonewall Farm is beginning to take shape and starting to look like Christmas is indeed coming, I still have a lot that I want to do, and I don't have time to do it. And I realized that the other week when I was driving to church, I got very overwhelmed because I kept thinking of everything that needs to get done. And these next two weeks, I'm just really busy with a business trip I need to go on and then other projects that I'm working on, which I hope to announce to you soon. But I found myself on the road, just clutching the steering wheel and I felt my heart racing. It was a gray, rainy day. We have some days of snow and some days of rain. It's very weird. And I really am praying we have snow for Christmas Eve. I love giving you a snowy Christmas Eve from Vermont. And I just felt my mood plummeting as I began to get overwhelmed with all the things I needed to do. And that's when I remembered Something I heard a while back, Christmas happens without you even doing anything. Christmas isn't about everything that you got ready in terms of decorating or the packages under the tree, it's about having a tree or anything else, but Christmas will just still happen. And that kind of took the pressure off of me to do everything else that I wanted to do. So it might just turn out that I'm just gonna have a little artificial twig tree in the kitchen with the orange slices and maybe some cinnamon sticks. I'll put some bows on and hang from the tree. And of course the real candles, which I only light for like a second when my husband is home, waiting in the background with a big bucket of water. <laughs> if that's all it's going to be, then I need to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to give you that permission as well. Whatever Christmas might be for you this year, if it's not what you expect it to be or want it to be, it's okay. Let it go. Let Christmas happen because it happens in the most unexpected ways. Like I said last week to you, how hope breaks in in the most unexpected ways. This week, as we light the candle of peace, I kept thinking about the scripture from Hebrews, which says to entertain strangers because by doing so, you might be entertaining angels. And I've always loved that scripture because throughout my life, I've always been amazed by the strangers that just happened to appear at the time I needed them the most. And in retrospect, I really do believe they were angels. And not even people, but even animals. I had this cat named Sullivan and after my boyfriend John was killed in an accident in Africa, gosh, back in 2001, Sullivan had this look in his eyes. And I really do believe that that cat was an angel bringing me comfort in those years that I grieved the loss of John. I can't explain it, but there was many times 
after his death where the cat would just stare at me or just give me the the most peaceful facial expression. And again, I can't explain it, but it was a moment that I just stopped and I felt the holy, if that makes sense. So I just love the reminder to entertain strangers because they just might be angels. And I guess that's why I've always loved the colonial pineapple, the symbol of hospitality and, and how that would mean that, you know, welcome all, welcome strangers, gather around the tavern table, have a glass of cheer, glass of mulled wine. It's just reassuring to know that even back then, there were people that wanted to share what they had with others, share what was precious. And it didn't matter if they knew you or not. Come to the table and experience community. Come to the table and experience connection with another person. And we need that so badly. This did a story for uh, the United Church of Christ on uh, mental health in the holidays. And I was speaking to the Minister of Disabilities and Mental Health. And she said that what is needed the most, not just during the holidays, but all throughout the year, what is needed is that we need to be authentic with one another. We need to, to just l drop those masks that we wear, that everything is okay. And we can't be afraid to ask the question, how is it with your soul? As I got ready to light the candle, I was thinking about this concept of peace. Of course, my mind went to the Christmas song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, How Still We See Thee Lie. And Bethlehem is not still. It is, there's a holy war going on now. Just fighting has broke out. And of all places, and I read that the little town Bethlehem is really struggling because they rely on tourism and of course no one is going there. So the people are really hurting on top of being in a precarious situation. Another picture that I saw that the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, the display this year, a pile of rubble. And on top of that pile of rubble is the baby Jesus. And that was heartbreaking because it was just a reminder how far away from peace we really are. At the start of the millennium, the new millennium, 1999, Bethlehem created the Peace Center, and it was really for children to learn about peace. The years have gone by, 20 plus years, and we are still no closer to peace. 2,000 years since the birth of Jesus, and we are still no closer to peace than we should be. So when I thought about the pineapple and hospitality and trying to trying to be patient with my rambunctious Bernie's Mountain Dog, it came to me that perhaps peace is possible or peace can start in our lives if we learn how to be kind to one another, if we learn how to be hospitable to one another. What would happen if we really opened up our doors and invited people into our homes, our lives, to sit at the table. So perhaps peace begins with us remembering to entertain strangers and be kind to them, be patient. It really does seem like peace is elusive, but I have to believe that peace is possible. It takes a little more work. Peace is something that we really need to strive towards. There is a lot more to this peace that God calls us to, to this peace that if we actually live it out, we honor the babe of Bethlehem, who was and is the Prince of Peace. I came across the other day what is called the Peacemaker's Creed, and a section of the Creed reminds us what is required of us to really be a peacemaker. And it says that a peacemaker requires us to be humble, to have humility. And that makes sense to not consider ourselves as greater than other people. When we do that, we are reminded that we don't have all the answers that we can learn from others. The creed also reminds us that 
peacemaking requires us to let go of power or privilege. We hold on to power when we seek that power, then we miss the beautiful connections that God wants for us. We miss really how to be human to one another. A peacemaker, well, it requires a lot of courage. And at first, I really didn't resonate with that. Peacemaking requires courage. But when I thought about it some more, it does, especially in today's world. It is the norm to fight back, to get even. And so to be a peacemaker, to take another route in life, that takes courage because you will then be different. And when you are different, that's when people start to point at you or to perhaps put you down or seek to silence you. It takes courage because peacemaking doesn't mean that you are meek. Being a peacemaker means that you speak up for others who don't have a voice. You stand up for somebody who is being bullied or is being accused of something unjustly. Being a peacemaker means you know when to speak up, to step in and to really seek another way. So as we light the second candle of peace, know that it is possible and it's true. Peace begins with you. The days are hastening on and I am going to make sure that at least my soul doesn't make haste, but rather I truly experience the holiness of this season, the holiness of God once again saying, I am with you. And that's the greatest experience of Christmas I could hope for you and for the world.